splendor of the king and clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice all the earth rejoice he wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice and trembles at his voice how great is our god sing with me how great is our god and all
get to be in God's house to worship. Isn't it awesome? I just love worshiping the Lord. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. 
It's your love, this heart is living for. Oh, you know, we want to wait for you, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we may not be, you're not perfect, but you are, Lord Jesus. And you take our broken hearts and you take our pieces and you take our ashes and you turn them into something so beautiful, Lord. So beautiful. You take our sorrows and our pain and you turn them into something so wonderful. Hallelujah. So I wait So I wait for you. I'm falling on my knees. Offering all of me. Jesus, your love, this heart is living for. Isn't Jesus good? Isn't God good? He is so good. He meets us every time. And when you get in God's presence, nothing can stay the same. Everything changes for him. Thank you, Jesus. And what I want you to do is I want you to stay in the attitude of worship, and I want you to greet somebody and just tell them you're so thankful they're here. But stay in the attitude of worship. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Than, and I uh, just want to welcome you. If you are a first-time visitor, like an extra big welcome to you, you are in an amazing, amazing place today. And one of the things that makes it amazing is our Connect cards. And so those are located either in the seat back in front of you, or if you're in the front row or the back row, they're actually underneath on a little tray there. So if you want to go ahead and grab those, you'll notice a couple different ones in there. There is a blue one, and that is for if you are brand new, if this is your first time coming here, we want you to fill that out so that we can get some information so we can connect with you. So while we're in the, go ahead and grab those, get them up, wave them in the air. There, I got a couple of them. All right, come on. There we go. All right. <laughs> Way to show up over here. <laughs> so... I'll come talk to you guys then. All right, so anyway, um, fill these out in their entirety, and then... So then that way we can connect with you to help you further your walk with Christ. When you're done with that, come to the black one. Now the black one is for those of us that have already filled out the blue card before, have been coming here for a while, all that stuff. And we want you to fill out, put your name, address, or a name and a phone number, all that stuff on there, which service you're attending, and then flip it over and go to the back. And this is the fun part. This is where we want to hear your praise reports and your prayer requests. And what happens is every Tuesday, the staff gets together and we fast and we pray over these. And just amazing and wonderful healing, like huge healing and huge movement in God has come through filling out these cards. Because I'm one of the people that pray over these and just the, the, the things that I have seen come through just show that God shows up when we show up. So what we need you to do is fill that out. And if you're listening online, looking at our, our online podcast, or the, the live feed rather, go ahead and there's a link in the comments that you can click on, and that'll take you to the prayer request page for on there as well. So we want to hear from you if you're online. So what, like I said, we fast and we pray over these, so fill these out. You're going to need a couple minutes, so we have some videos that are going to that are going to play. So feel free to fill those out. The ushers are going to come around with the offering basket. Go ahead and stick them in there with that. 
and we'll collect and we'll pray over them at the end of the service. And speaking of offering, the other card that you'll see down there is a little orange card that says five ways to give. And that's just five easy ways that we have here at New Song for you to give your tithes and your offerings. So go ahead and grab that card too. Now let's pray quick. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the gathering that we have here, all the people that made it out in the snow. We pray for safe travels coming to and from church and wherever, wherever we go throughout the day, Lord, we just pray that your hand be not only us and not only on us, but on the people that are driving out there. Lord, we just pray for safety. And we also pray that this offering, Heavenly Father, that this offering we're about to receive just be a huge a huge boon to whoever is receiving it. To wherever it goes, Lord, just, just let it shine your light in that place. So Heavenly Father, we just pray over this, and we pray over this, the whole congregation, that the Holy Spirit be with them and in them and on them as they go about their week, Lord, and that your light and your love just spreads. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, enjoy the videos. Hello, church family. It's Drake. Welcome to New Song, and a special welcome to you who are a first-time guest. We are a church family empowering our community to live in Jesus Christ, and this is your news to know. We need your help collecting the following items to be able to take to the Philippines to bless an orphanage and families in need. We need school supplies like pens, pencils, notebooks, crayons, markers, paints, and hygiene products like toothbrushes, toothpaste, combs, brushes, shampoos, and soap. Any monetary donations will be used to purchase supplies. Donations need to be dropped off into the Share the Love bins on or before Wednesday, November 19th. Please email Mark Matheseth with questions. Join us once again in making children in our community feel valued and loved this Christmas season. Giving Tree tags will be displayed in the gathering place for those who want to dedicate time and money towards buying a personalized gift for a child. Tags will give details of gender, favorite colors, sizes, and interest. Make a kid's wish come true this Christmas while sharing the love of Jesus. Christmas gifts need to be turned in and wrapped by 1 p.m. on Sunday, December 16th. There will be another vision meeting on Sunday, December 2nd at 12 p.m. in the gathering place to take place of the noon service. This meeting is for those interested in hearing our lead pastor, Kurt Chafee, present his vision for New Song. Discover what the Lord has laid on his heart and how we can be a church family empowering our community to live in Jesus Christ. Lunch will be served and RSVP is required. Sign up at the access booth or call the church office by Sunday, November 25th. Well, New Song, that was your news to know. Have a great week. Happy Veterans Day to all you veterans. Um, today is November 11th, Veterans Day. And how many know the anniversary, uh, how many years it's been since uh, the end of World War I? 
100 years today. And it's interesting. So the reason we celebrate Veterans Day on November 11th is because on the 11th day, or the 11th month, 11th day at the 11th hour is when the war ended. So it was like an hour and a half ago, 100 years ago, the war ended. So that's why they, um, they celebrate Veterans Day on November 11th. So I was talking to some of our veterans, and they're like, how can we celebrate them and thank them? And, and as we talked, they thought it would be cool to do 11 seconds of silence for our veterans. So would you guys bow your heads, and we'll just do 11 seconds of silence for our veterans. God, we uh, thank you for our veterans and uh, what they do to sacrifice and to protect us and stand for freedom. And uh, Lord, we're just grateful for them. And, and uh, most of all, Lord, we're grateful that you stand for us and you defend us and you sent Jesus so that we could know at some point and some time, some day in the future, we'll be able to look back and we will know war is a thing of the past. And we're looking forward to that day. But Lord, we just, again, are grateful for our veterans and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. So with that said, for all you veterans, I went online and I found what I could for the freebies for veterans in our community today and tomorrow. And uh, we put it on a piece of paper. It's at the access booth. So if you're a veteran, these places would love for you to come to their establishment and they want to honor you by giving you a, um, a free meal or whatnot. So you can pick that up if you're a veteran there and you can enjoy that and again like i said they want to honor you <clears throat> so we are in our life series the last series of the year already which is hard to believe and um it's winter there's white stuff on, uh, stuff on the ground how many deer hunters are out there anybody deer hunt here you guys get yours you did you did nice nice you get yeah we we got skunk so congratulations pray for us that got skunked but um, you know, some other congratulations. Uh, did anybody watch the BHS-CHS football game Friday night? It, it was so, it was awesome. BHS-CHS played for the championship game, and they both represented our city so well, and it was just a nail-biter the whole time. Came Literally, it came to the last play of the game, and BHS held off Century at the very end of the game, and BHS won 21-16. It was a great game, so that was a congratulations. Also, congratulations to Kevin Kramer for winning his seven seasons. He's one of our very own here. Also, a congratulations, as I said, to our deer hunters. Oh, I forgot to say, Austin um, uh, Hash, who is part of the youth group, he was on the Century football team, and he did a great job. And so congratulations to those guys, too, as well. And then we get to celebrate today to get to have our very own Michael Streeper come and share the word with us. Would you guys all welcome up Michael Streeper? Come on down there, buddy. Are you coming up here? You're green, you're green, you're go. You're green for go. All right, thank you. Better get ready. God bless you guys. Bless you, buddy. Thank you. Um, I want to say thank you to Kurt. Pastor Alyssa and Pastor Mike and Pastor Mike for letting me come up here and share. It's awesome being here at New Song and, and sharing up here. It's just surreal for me to even be standing up here. So uh, uh, pretty amazing. Uh, Curse, he's been doing a series on the Gospel of Mark. And we're going through, uh, I think it's a great idea, um, going through the Gospel of Mark, just reading the book. And uh, first couple services, we touched on a couple things that were, actually one of them we're going to touch here. He's going through the Gospel of Mark. The Gospel of Mark's a fast-paced gospel. It's um, traditionally believed to be possibly the Gospel of Peter. It's possible that Peter is the one that was preaching. In 65, uh, church tradition says that Peter is crucified um, upside down. He died in, in Rome, that he was preaching somewhere between 63 and 65. The Paul and Peter were both preaching in Rome. And end up, uh, uh, Paul had his head cut off somewhere around 65. And, and Peter ended up dying. Um, Nero, who was uh, the Roman emperor, ended up killing Peter. Um, Peter says he, he wasn't worthy to die the same way his master died, so he wanted to be crucified upside down. And so he was crucified upside down, but leading up to that time, he was preaching in Rome. And this, and this young guy in the Gospels, he's mentioned a, a little bit, he traveled with Paul and Barnabas on his first missionary journey. John Mark was actually there with Peter, listening to Peter preach, and that's what we have in, in, the, in the Gospel of Mark, is the way John Mark recorded Peter's preaching. 
pretty interesting. The point of the point of the Gospel of Mark is to pre, is to to show the supremacy of Jesus Christ as the Son of God, that He has supremacy and authority. Um, up to this point, we're coming out of chapter three. Um, up to this point, we see that Jesus Christ has has authority over sickness and disease. That He has authority over over the devil and even over sin. And he's, he's preaching fire. He comes on the scene. He's preaching in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the religious leaders, leaders of the time, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes who were the experts in the law. They didn't like his message. Jesus Christ is a threat to the Pharisees. He's a threat to their a religious agenda. They got their own thing going on. And here's Jesus Christ. He comes preaching, preaching a, a message uh, not contrary to theirs, but it was contrary to theirs. It, 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 it was a message of freedom, and it's truly what the kingdom of God was like, and it really threatened their agenda. So the text we're coming out of today is in Mark 3. This is for my people right here. <laughs> that's, what the, that's a little bit what you get at Bible study <laughs> on Tuesdays. <laughs> Um, Mark 3. <laughs> Didn't think I'd do it, did you? <laughs> Mark 3. Uh, the Pharisees, the scribes, they, they don't like Jesus' message. Um, Jesus was casting out devils. He's healing people in, in the power of the Holy Spirit. And these guys are coming against Jesus. And here in verse 22. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said... He has Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devils he casts out devils. And he called them unto him, and he said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? And if the kingdom be divided against itself, and that kingdom cannot stand, and if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but has an end." No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he'll first bind the strong man, and then he'll spoil his house. Verily I say unto you, of a truth I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith whoever they blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Spirit has never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation, because they said he has an unclean spirit. You know, traveling through... Uh, federal prison. I use examples of federal prison because I was in prison uh, less than a year ago. But um, going through federal prison, you, you go and in, you meet interesting people and you go to interesting places. Oklahoma City is the, is the hub. It's the center, the transport center in the, in the middle of the nation. If you go to California from the middle of the nation or you go to Arizona or you go to Texas or you go to or Iowa or, or in Nebraska, anywhere in the, middle, in, the, in the middle of the country, you have to go through Oklahoma City. So you go from one prison to Oklahoma City to the other prison. And so everybody has to go through there. When you, get, when you come off the airplane, you literally about 200 people. They're shackled and they're like this off the airplane in this big, long hallway. And, and, you, and then you, they, they shuffle you, take the shackles off, they put you in, a, in a, like a dog kennel for about two hours. And then they put about another 100 people in another dog kennel for a couple hours. And after about four hours of sitting there, they move you to another one for another hour or so. And then they move you up to the pod where you're going. And there's something about Oklahoma City. When you get off the, off the airplane, you enter in. It's like you enter into just, just a darkness. There's just a darkness in that building. Even non-Christians, people who don't know anything about the spiritual realm, they just, there's something about Oklahoma City. And when you finally make it up to the pod, you think it, it feels funny when you, there's something about it in the hallway. When you make it finally up to the pod, about 150 people, it's a big building, there's thousands of people there. Um, when you finally make it into the pod, there's two tiers, uh, cells all the way around, about 150 people, and... Uh, as soon as you enter in there, the pods, they have all different security people, people from the camp security, which is lowest, uh, FCI low, FCI medium, and then the USPs, which USPs are the serious places. Um, it's madhouses and USPs. And so as soon as you enter into the pod, it's like it's a whole new level. You enter in, it's like, whoa. Just like you feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you can feel the evil in the air. It's just thick and heavy. If you've ever been to... Uh, a place where people do drugs or people even walk into a room with people and arguing there's this a there's a something in the air you can feel it it's because we live in a spiritual world it, the thing we live in a in a spiritual world where there's there is a demonic force there's real demons and in the battle that we fight in in this life it's spiritual when jesus christ came in this world the world was hit 
It was spiritually dark. It's like when you enter into a cave, deep down into a cave, and they turn the lights off. If you've ever been in a cave, it's dark. I mean, there's absolutely no light. That was the spiritual condition of the world when Jesus Christ came. When he came in and, and the Holy Spirit came on Jesus and he entered into, into his ministry, he was like a nuclear sun cruising in this earth. And that's why demons, they see in Jesus, they're like, ah, oh, we know who you are. You're the son of God. Because he was just like a, a, a sunshine, like a sun beaming in this dark earth. When Adam sinned, he handed the world over to the devil. That's why the Bible says that the devil is the God of this world. We wonder why there's sickness and there's crime and there's all these things in this world. It's because, because the devil has authority right now. He's the God of this world, unless you're in Christ. <laughs> so we, with these things that are happening, it, it's because there's a war going on. There's a spiritual war. Um, if there's two, there's two kingdoms warring against each other. That's what we have in this text. When Jesus Christ came, he's literally the invading king, invading uh, the devil's kingdom to take back the world. That's what he did. He's our king invading. So the, the world was, was in darkness, and our king led the charge, led the invasion against the devil to take back this world through the power of the Holy Spirit and preaching the good news, preaching the gospel. And so when he's casting out devils, it's literally a military attack against the devil's kingdom. And now he's still advancing the kingdom through us, through the power of the Holy Spirit, through each one of us, as we preach the gospel and we just tell people about the truth of Jesus Christ, they're set free and they receive Jesus Christ. So there's this military move. If we don't understand that there's two kingdoms warring against each other, it's hard to understand this text because that's what Jesus is talking about. There's a war. There's two, there's two kingdoms battling each other. And he says... He says um, in 23, how can Satan cast out Satan? So you have these two wars and you have these two kingdoms battling against each other. And, and he's, it doesn't make sense. What happens if you have, you have, you have two sides battling against each other and, the, and then one side all of a sudden turns and starts battling and fighting itself? It, it's going to lose. The, that side is going to lose. And so, and so he says, how can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. So if, if, the, if the side turns and destroys itself, it's not going to win. He said, if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself, he be divided, he, can, he cannot stand, and there's an end. So Jesus Christ has come in and he's invaded the earth and he's, and he's permeating, he's taking back this earth. In Matthew 13, I just want to share this cool verse with you. Matthew 13, 33. It says, the kingdom of heaven, this is what the kingdom of heaven is like. This is what's going on in the spiritual realm. If you take a step back and you look what God's doing in this earth, this is what it looks like. It says, the kingdom of heaven is like unto yeast, or leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leavened. That's in the King James. You ever take a little bit of yeast and you put it in dough and, and, you, just, and you just yield it throughout the whole dough? That yeast gets through the whole dough. And then you leave the dough and the dough just rises. And, and that's exactly what the kingdom of God, that's what God, in the whole big picture, because he sees the end from the beginning. When, when Kurt was talking about eternity, you have this rope. And that's what eternity looks like. God has literally taken back this earth from the devil through us, through, through Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, through us. And the, and the kingdom is literally working itself throughout the whole earth. It's a beautiful picture of what God is doing. Verse 27, he says, No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he'll first bind the strong man and then spoil his house. We all have personal confrontations with the devil in the spiritual realm every day, whether we know it or not. Whether we acknowledge that we're in a spiritual battle or not, it doesn't change anything. We are in a war. We're in a real spiritual battle, in a, a war in this world. Working at Teen Challenge, it's a privilege. It, it's, it's, such a, it's such a privilege watching God change people's lives. I get to see people come in and um, broken hopeless, really at the end of themselves, angry, bitter, unforgiveness. They have all this stuff in, in life, and, and they believe a bunch of lies, and they believe that the world is one way, and you see God come in and just change people. 
and you see over time this transformation. It's just like flowers, beautiful flowers opening up, and you see this wonderful transformation in people. I see people uh, get this radically saved somewhere around the two to four month mark or something. It's like the lights go on, and all of a sudden, boom, there's just this transformation in people's lives. I see people get filled with the Holy Spirit. People get saved. This radical change in people's lives. We just had a guy last week get so full of the Holy Spirit, he almost couldn't even stand up. <laughs> we were praying for somebody else in front of the church, and, and, and I felt the Holy Spirit was rocking. I figured, man, there's something going on here. Someone's going to get it. And uh, the guy right next to me, he got so full, he goes, holy smokes, i got to sit down. I said, man, you got it. <laughs> so, it's, it's awesome working over there and watching God move in people's lives. But it's, it's, almost, it's almost predictable that as soon as God starts moving in a situation, a little creep, the devil, will come in and try opposing him. It, it, and so it, it's like that in life, right? As soon as God's doing something in our life and, and doing something wonderful, God bless you, uh, doing something in our lives, we can, we can almost trust that, that there's opposition. I'm getting married in a few days. <laughs> I'm super blessed. Um, to a spirit-filled woman that loves Jesus, that knows how to get from God, get with God, uh, knows how to hear from God, does hear from God, and uh, I couldn't be more happy. I'm, I'm so blessed. Um, was it marrying up? I'm marrying up. <laughs> um, I'm super blessed. But coming in uh, when God has, has brought us together um, in, in the spiritual realm, it's powerful being with another spirit-filled person. And, and when we pray together, um, some, you know, sometimes the glory cloud comes in while we're praying. I'm like, whoo, it's powerful. We have some powerful moments praying, and it's, it's good. Um, but there's been some opposition. The devil is, anytime God is doing something big in the kingdom, you can, you can trust that the devil's going to oppose it. He's going to try, try to come in and oppose it. And so as we mature in Christ, we need to learn how to stand against um, those things. Understanding that we live in a spiritual world and the battles we battle are spiritual is why Teen Challenge is so successful battling addiction. Because we understand that addiction is a spiritual problem. And, and secular programs, there's some very good secular programs, I love you, but they're limited in their success with battling addiction because addiction is a spiritual problem. You need Jesus Christ to fight the spiritual battle. Jesus Christ comes in and breaks the power of addiction at the root in the spiritual realm. And then a person is set free, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. He's talking about the Spirit. And, and, and so you need Jesus Christ to fight in the spiritual realm. We, we fight in relationships, family, depression, anger, fear, anxiety, lust. These things are spiritual battles. We need Jesus Christ to fight these things. John 10.10 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I come to bring life and life abundantly. Jesus Christ wants to bring life abundantly. You can, you can tell the fruit of the Spirit operating in a situation by if it steals, kills, destroy, destruction, decomposition, division. That's the fruit of, of a demonic spirit. But the fruit of the Holy Spirit will edify, build up, extort, comfort, always build up. Because the heart of the Father is to lift up and build up and restore. That's the heart of God. He's a good God. So how do we fight in the battle? How do we fight in the spiritual battle? We learn how to press in. It's an intimate, if there's one thing, it, it, we don't know when our, our day is going to come. It could be short. It, we could be here for years or it could be days. If I could leave one thing, it's that God is a good God and he's calling us to an intimate relationship. That's how we, that's how we battle in the spiritual realm. We learn how to use our authority, and we seek in and we press God. Press into God and radically seek Jesus Christ. When you get saved, in John 4, it says that you have a, a well of living water. A, a well of living water springing up to eternal life. That's a, a well of water. You, you put a bucket down and you, and you drop a drink. That's for ourselves. But in John 7, it says that there's rivers of living water. And, and those rivers are a lot different than a well. So when you get saved, you get a well of water, but there's something beautiful that God has given the world, and that's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is when the power of God comes upon a person, and it's the same Spirit, it's just a greater measure. 
And, and, and the, when, when you're walking in the presence of God, in the spirit of God, the rivers are flowing. Everybody should be getting wet all around you. Uh, the, the, the living water should be affecting everywhere. River, rivers of, of, of living water should be just splashing on people. And so salvation is for us, but the baptism in the Holy Spirit is for those around us. And, and so we seek God. We, in, in the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes the gifts of tongues. We seek God. We learn how to press in and get in his presence and, and get deep in his presence and saturate in his presence. In, in true victory over the devil, we learn how to use our authority and we learn how to get deep in God's presence and stay in his presence and walk in the Holy Spirit. We keep pressing in. The battles we battle are not a one-time battle. We need to learn how to fight these things. I know people have great battles over depression and, and addiction, and then, and then it seems like they just fall away because the devil, he comes in and they fall away. And this, this Christian walk is not a one-time thing. It's learning how to walk with God on a regular basis. We learn how to get in God's, God's presence and, and, and truly press in. Mark 3, 28 and 29 uh, Kurt touched on this earlier. He says, uh, the unpardonable sin. Verily I say unto you, all sin shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith soever they blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Spirit has never forgiveness, shall not be, never be forgiven, but is in danger of eternal damnation, because they said he has an unclean spirit. Jesus Christ was casting out devils by the power of the Holy Spirit, and the Pharisees were saying that he was doing it by the power of Satan. And so they were blaspheming the Holy Spirit. But there's something else going on here, something deeper than just surface level. In John 3, 1 and 2, Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night. And, and he says, we know that this is a, a Nicodemus was of the Sanhedrin, he was one of the top 70 um, top Pharisees and the leaders. He, he was, he was a, a very learned man, and he was with this group of scribes. He would have known these scribes. He was, a, he was one of these religious guys, and he was one of the top religious guys. He says, we know that you're a man from God, because no man can do the works you're doing unless he comes from God. These Pharisees were rejecting Jesus Christ when they knew that he was from God. That's the unpardonable sin. If you don't have the Son, you can't be forgiven. They were rejecting the only source of forgiveness. That's the unpardonable sin. Were they blaspheming the Holy Spirit by saying that he's casting out devils by the power of devil when it's really the Holy Spirit? Yes. But the real unpardonable sin is rejecting the only source of forgiveness. Do we blaspheme the Holy Spirit? Have we, have we blasphemed the Holy Spirit? We all have. We, we have all, um, Kurt mentioned, we've all grieved the Holy Spirit. We've all blasphemed against God at some point. Um, <laughs> but praise God that, that Jesus Christ died on the cross, and, and his cross is greater than any sin I can commit, as long as I receive him. There comes the, uh, questions. What about the guys that some believe, people believe that the gift of tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecies kind of went away at the age of the apostles? And so, and so they don't believe in these things. Or even when, when the power of God comes on a person, uh, they wouldn't even believe it. Like the man that got filled with the Holy Spirit last week, um, they got whammied in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Not even a little bit. I mean, he got, he got super full. He, he, got, he got blasted by the Holy Spirit and almost couldn't even stand up. What do you do with that? They would say, well, that doesn't exist or he's emotional. And if somebody gets, gets filled with the Holy Spirit, he said he was speaking in tongues. He didn't realize he was. It was just coming out. He said he thought he had the Holy Spirit before, but he got he really got it at that time, and he probably he did have it the whole before. But what do you do? Um, people would say there's certain people that would say that the gift of tongues and a second work of the Holy Spirit, a second work of sanctification, when the power of the Holy Spirit comes on a person, it's not for today. So if the Holy Spirit does come into a person and they do speak in tongues, they're doing it by a different spirit. They're literally saying they're doing it by the power of the devil. Are those people blaspheming the Holy Spirit? Yes, they are. They're blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Are they committing the unpardonable sin? No, not at all. If they're born again, they're born again. They're just doing it out of ignorance. They don't know any better. But Paul says, and I learned this from Kurt, <laughs> um, 1 Timothy, Paul says um, that he was a blasphemer. In 1 Timothy 1, 12 and 13, 
So there's, there's, there's different degrees and types of blasphemy. There's different degrees of the blasphemy in the Holy Spirit. And here we have Paul. He was also a blasphemer. He said, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has enabled me, for that he counted me faithful and put me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. He was rejecting Jesus Christ. He was a religious man, but he, he actually thought he was doing the works of God because he didn't understand God's plan. So he, well, he's killing Christians. He was zealous for God, but he actually thought he was doing God's plan by killing Christians. It's no different by pe people that think praying in tongues is of the devil. They just don't know any better. Paul didn't know any better. Hebrews 6. Hebrews 6, great verses. I love Hebrews. He, rich. <laughs> Hebrews 6, verses 4 through 6. Um, some people say these are controversial verses, but they're really not controversial. The only reason they're controversial is sometimes they don't fit into people's box they have God in. The um, entire book of Hebrews is a theological word, exegesis. <laughs> if you understand, exegesis is pulling the truth out of Scripture um, without putting our own truth into it. If we understand that the book of Hebrews is written uh, to, to Hebrew Christians that were born again and have tasted the Holy Spirit, and they were walking with God, and then they wanted to reject Jesus Christ and put themselves back under animal sacrifices for forgiveness. That's the entire background of the, of the letter of Hebrews. So the letter of Hebrews, the author is writing, he's like, don't leave Jesus. There's no forgiveness outside of Jesus Christ. Don't leave. And they're like, no, we're going to be persecuted. It's too hard. We're going to go back to the, the law. We're going to go back on our animal sacrifices so we're not persecuted. He's like, don't do it. There's no forgiveness outside of Jesus. But these people knew Jesus. They tasted of the Holy Spirit, and they still wanted to walk away from him. In Hebrews 6, verse 4, he says, For it is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, this means the Holy Spirit has illuminated the gospel, tasted the heavenly gift. Who's the heavenly gift? Jesus, the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the, whole, is the, whole, is the heavenly gift. So they received the salvation, the gift from God. They were made partakers of the Holy Spirit, which means they, they filled the Holy Spirit, the gospel has been, been, the Holy Spirit has illuminated the truth of Jesus. They received Jesus. They've been filled with the Holy Spirit. They've tasted of the good word of God, which means they're receiving, they're hearing from God. They're mature enough that they're getting meat. They're, they're, they're getting in there and they're hearing from God, the good word of God. And, and of the power of the age to come, the, the glory and the power is flowing through these people. They've tasted of God. They've experienced God, but then if they fall away, they apostate from God, it's impossible to re renew them again to repentance because they rejected Jesus after the new Jesus. That's the unpardonable sin. When I was in prison, I seen, it, it's, I seen people that grew up in the church. They knew Jesus Christ. They experienced the Holy Spirit their families were Christians. Maybe their dad was a pastor. They knew Jesus was Lord. But then things happened. Maybe their wife died. Children died. They go on a drug binge and maybe get a 22-year sentence. They shake their fist at God. They're mad at God. And um, end up in prison. And next thing you know, they're at a Islamic service, confessing to Shahada, denying Jesus, putting himself back under the law. Are those guys forgiven? No. They've rejected the only source of forgiveness there is. They've lost what they once had. The whole time, the, the bad things happened in their life, it wasn't even God. They're blaming God for it. It's actually the devil, and they're blaming God for what the devil did. They're mad at God when it's really just be mad at the devil. Many times the devil does evil things and, and does hurt the people's lives, and then and the, the trick of the devil, he whispers in your ear, he says, look at God could have stopped that. Yeah. Yeah. It was the devil the whole time. And you're blaming God for what the devil de does. O Odism, it's a, a group, uh, I don't even call it a religion, like a cult, but it's, it's, a, racist, it's a racist group where they um, worship Thor and um, Zeus. It is still, it was, it's big in prison. It's, it's Aryan, um, but they have it here in the streets too. Um, but when you come into Odism, you get in a circle and you actually verbally deny Jesus nine times. Why Jesus? 
Why not Buddha or Hinduism or any other? Because there's no power in those things. There's only power in Jesus Christ. And so they have to deny Jesus Christ nine times. There's a spiritual war going on for souls. The battle's real. The things we battle in life, it's a spiritual battle. That's what we're looking at in this text, is, is the battles of addiction, the battles in family, the division. The de- he says, if a kingdom's divided, the devil wants to divide families. He wants to divide children. He wants to divide whatever in our, in our work. He's co- in ministry, he wants to come in and cause division. Those are spiritual battles. Instead of looking at the flesh, it's, we need to understand that the battles we fight are in the spiritual realm. There's a drug problem in this town, <laughs> in case you guys don't know that. <laughs> the answer is Jesus Christ, an intimate relationship with Jesus. I did drugs for almost 20 years. I'm the least likely to get saved. And uh, one moment when Jesus Christ broke those chains, one moment with Jesus, <laughs> and, and I was delivered. From, from years of addiction. And, and in this battle, the answer is an intimate relationship with Jesus. That's what God's calling us to. And seek more of God. There's always more with God. It doesn't just have to be a one-time experience with the Holy Spirit. He wants us to press in for more and more and more. Get in the deep end, Kurt was saying. Get in deep with God. Seek the nuggets. He's got revelation hidden here for us. They're not hid from us. They're hid for us. He's like, come in and look. I got some treasures for you. <laughs> the pink diamond. <laughs> oh, it's, <laughs> it's like you have, you have a, a beach. <laughs> this is for Jill. But you have a beach, um, and you have all these gems right underneath the sand. Some of them are a little deeper. Some of them are a little shallower. And as we dig and dig and deep under, it's like, oh, a little gem here, a little gem. And we get down deep, and we're like, oh, look at this beautiful pink diamond. Yeah. That's the that's nuggets the Lord has for us. So press in and recognize that we do walk in a spiritual, uh, spiritual world and a spiritual war. But the answer is always the same. Radically seek Jesus Christ. And we fight from a place of victory, not for it. We have victory. We have authority. We are not weak in in Jesus. We are strong in Jesus. We are strong. That's it. Isn't it so cool? A year ago, he was in the pen. I just love the redemptive power of Jesus and get to see it played out in front of us, and God loves to do it. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, thank you. Great job. We'll get him back up here again. So one of the things that, you know, as we close up here is, you know, people talk about parables in the Bible, and I don't know if you've talked to people about parables. It's like, why did Jesus do that? Because even in, in the Bible itself, God said one of the reasons he talked to them is because he didn't want them to know what was going on. He wanted to keep the depth and this, the, the pink diamond and these treasures, he wanted to keep them away from the evil people. Well, isn't that, that's kind of mean to Jesus. Well, he doesn't want them to be free. No, he wanted them to be free, but he wanted them to be truly free. Not just free, like, materialistically, or you know, with the, the cares of this world and the money and all the power and all the trippy stuff. He wanted them to truly be free. And so he would call them to himself and he'd say, let me tell you a story. But they would harden their heart and they'd say, we don't want that. We want our power. And that's why, again, proof of the spiritual battle. But the reason he gave parables was not to hide anything, as, and I loved the way you said that, not to hide anything from us, but to hide it for us. And to prove his compassion. How many of you guys like to go to a good movie or love to hear a good story or read a good book? Where does that come from? Our God, our creator, he put it in us. We love this stuff, and that's why he gave us parables. He's like, let me help you. Let me show you my love and my compassion and and to help you have a way to be deep with me. 
and to be intimate with me. Here's a great way to do this. And you know, when you have a conversation with somebody, if you're sitting at Taco, is Margo in here? Taco Bell, I don't know, if you, or wherever you're at, and you're sitting talking with somebody, some of the greatest conversations you'll ever have are just the stories of life. Oh, yesterday I went and hunt. I could tell you a story about hunting yesterday. Why would I do that? Why would you care about my story about hunting? Because what does it do? It creates intimacy. God loves this. But it also then gives us the way to become deep with him. This is why he did parables. And this is why when we read the Bible, as Mike was talking, is we have to sit still for five minutes, right? You have to kind of chill and sit to be able to ponder these things. And that's what God wants to know is, do you want to go deep with me? Do you want to be intimate with me? If you will take the time, sit still for five minutes with me, I will blow your mind. And it'll be awesome. And you, this stuff that addiction has duped you to believe or whatever else thing that we're chasing, will find out that it is exactly what it is, fake. It's not the real thing. We want the real thing. That's what God gives us. So great job, Mike. That was awesome. And... Uh, and uh, looking forward to having you back up here next week. I can't remember who's preaching at the new service, but somebody is, and it'll be awesome. And I love this service. This is my favorite service. I love it to see God work in people. And I tell you what, he's raising people up. He's raising people up. If you've got the pitter pat in your heart to get up here, let me know. Let me know. But I probably, you know what? And this is, sometimes you know what we do, and we talked about this in the first two services, is God will say, hey, you should do that. And we're like, oh, no. I'm not going to do that. He's like, come on, come deep with me. Come to the deep end. Come to the deep end. So let us know. We'll, we'll, we're trying to find ways to get people to plug in. And uh, there's it, one of the things that we believe as a church, you know, our, our mission statement is connect, grow, serve, deploy, is serve. Serve. Mike just served us up a smorgasbord. Right? That's right. We serve. Yes, we serve up. We serve our God and we serve one another. Connect with God. Connect with each other. Grow with God, grow with each other. Serve God, serve each other, and then deploy and say, let's go take this to the world. They desperately need it. There's so many people aimlessly walking around out there just hopeless. Prison or not prison, they're in prison. We get to take the gospel to them. So many people out there blowing up their life. And God is saying, let me help you. And then when he helps us, we can go to others and say, hey, we got the answer here. You don't have to blow up your life. You don't have to walk aimless and empty. God wants to be with you. So would you pray with me? God, we are so grateful again for Mike and, and for your spirit that has done an incredible work in this man. And there's no other way to say it. There's no way we could stand here and say, look how awesome Mike is. It, it's it, Because we know Mike from the past. But we can now look at him and say, look at Mike on Jesus. Not on drugs, but on Jesus. This is what you do, God, and you are so faithful. And we are so excited for his future and his future wedding and and all the plans for, for him and all the stuff that the devil tried to steal from him, you're going to replace. And we're excited for that. We're so grateful that you are good. So, Lord, we all, we all want to live in that. And so, Lord, I pray over these Connect cards. You guys extend your hand and let's pray over these Connect cards. We just pray for every life represented here, every situation, uh, that same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Lord, we know it, we need it to manifest often. So we pray that you will do just that, that you will empower every situation, every person, Lord, that you will take us to the deep and you will help us when we have fear to overcome it by the power of Jesus. And Lord, when we get empty and aimless, that you will bring that clarity that only you can bring. And so we're grateful that we can entrust these to you. We can lay our petition at your throne. We can crawl up into your lap and say, here it is, God, here's my heart. Here's all of me transparent before you. And you as a good dad will take us up under your lap, pull us close and help us through. And there's nothing better until we meet you face to face. So God, we just again agree with these things in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. So let's stand and we'll close with our series verse. Uh, one quick thing, there's going to be a prayer team right over here. If you need prayer, we say this often, longest walk sometimes from that chair to the prayer team. If you need prayer, go get it, go get it. If you're saying yes to Jesus for the first time today and you've never said yes to Jesus or you need a Bible, right over here at the Next Steps Boost, we'll help you out with that. We already told you about serving. You can go online at newsongbismarck.com and get all this information and more. Click the serve button. You can get plugged in somewhere. And then lastly, if you want to meet with our care team and walk through something, we'd love to do that. Okay, so you guys ready for the series verse? Here we go. 
The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. John 10.10. 10. God bless you guys. Have a great week. Make sure you give Mike a high five.